We all know that Fortnite has done it all when it comes to adding different items to the game. I mean, even if you were only to look at the weapons in Fortnite history, that list is still endless on its own. But today we're going to look at some of the weirder items as we go over the uncategorized items in Fortnite Battle Royale's history. Now, some of the items on this list may have an unofficial categorization, but they are still technically considered uncategorized. Let's begin. To start things off, we're going to keep it very simple and get one thing out the way. Every single key card and every medallion are technically considered uncategorized. And I'm sure nobody wanted to listen to me explain all these things. Well, actually, leave a comment if you want to see a video of me explaining all the key cards and medallions and stuff like that. Anyways, moving on. First up on the list, we have the Creepin' Cardboard. Whoever came up with that name is hilarious. Anyways, it was introduced in Chapter 2 Season 2 and ended up being vaulted the next season. And it was basically just supposed to be a disguise. You could wear it and pretty much move around like normal. And that's about it. Next up, we have the Inflatable. It was introduced in Chapter 2 Season 7 and eventually vaulted for good in Chapter 3 Season 1. And while this also has a top tier name, I think this is actually a really cool item. There wasn't much to it, all you would do was pretty much go into an inflatable pool and you would bounce around the map without taking any fall damage. If used correctly, you could actually move around the map very quickly with these. And moving on, we have two jetpacks. The Stark Industries jetpack, which came out in Chapter 2 Season 4, and the Mandalorian's jetpack, which came out in Chapter 2 Season 5. And honestly, there's not much to say about these. They work pretty much just like the normal jetpack. You could fly for a short period of time and you could stop yourself from falling, of course. But if you use them and fell from a height, they would not negate the fall damage. Now these next three are pretty similar to one another. And first we have the Kamehameha Wave, obviously from the Dragon Ball Z collab. And we all know that this thing left its mark on Fortnite for sure. It was introduced in Chapter 3 Season 3 and vaulted for good in Chapter 4 Season 1. When using it, you would go into the air and charge up the Kamehameha Wave before sending it at an enemy player which did 100 damage on impact and if you could keep that beam on them, it would continually do 40 damage until it was finished. Then we have Deku Smash from the My Hero Academia collab. It came out right after the Kamehameha was vaulted. And when using it, you would go up, charge it up, and then punch, sending a large vortex in front of you, usually dealing 100 to 150 damage depending on how far away you were. In the last of those attacks, we have the Hollow Purple from the Jujutsu Kaisen collab. Working somewhat similar to the previous two attacks, it's a charge up and a blast again. Which in this case, you would merge two spheres together into one large purple sphere, sending it ahead of you pretty much destroying anything in its way and dealing 100 damage on impact. My apologies if I butcher the Deku Smash or the Purple Hollow. I haven't watched those animes cause, well, I'm lazy, and I'm not sure how on point they are to the actual show. Anyways, moving along, we have the Nimbus Cloud, which is pretty straightforward. It would send you high into the air and act like a glider redeploy pretty much. Pretty cool item if you ask me. Moving on, we have the Spider-Man web shooters and the Spider-Verse web shooters. Spider-Man's web shooters were introduced in Chapter 3 Season 1 while the Spider-Verse ones were introduced in Chapter 4 Season 2. While they do have a different appearance, they work pretty much the same way. As you could have guessed, you could swing all over the map with these things on. Some of the most fun movement items we've ever had in the game. And next up we have the Venom and Carnage Symbiotes. These were both introduced in Chapter 2 Season 8 and they actually also work pretty similar to each other. They gave you a speed boost and gave you glider redeploy, also giving you the ability to grab players even through structures. Moving on, we have an item that was only in the game for around 30 minutes, and that's the Eye of the Storm Tracker. Introduced in Season 4, when you equipped it, it would replace your back bling and it showed you where the next circle would be at. That's pretty much it. I can see why they removed it though because they did come out with the Storm Scout Sniper later on and it pretty much did the same thing except it was also a sniper. That's a little bit better than just taking up a spot in your item slot. Next up is an item that's just funny to think it was in Battle Royale. 
and that's the Grabatron. It was introduced in Chapter 2 Season 7 and the name is very fitting because it literally allowed you to grab things and throw them. And it would actually do more or less damage depending on the size of the item that was thrown. Moving on we have the Proper Fire and the prop o -Matic. Now yes, these do sound similar and they kind of look a little bit similar and that's because they are. They pretty much do the same exact thing, turn you into props. However, the difference is that the prop o -Matic was used in prop hunt mini games while the prop fire was actually used in battle royale. It was introduced in chapter 2 season 7 and vaulted the next season. Next up we have the howler claws. Introduced in chapter 3 season 4, when equipped with this item it would pretty much turn you into a werewolf. It would allow you to dash forward and slash players with your claws. Also you could howl and it would mark nearby enemies locations. This was a pretty cool item. Next is a very simple one with the hunter's cloak. It was introduced in chapter 2 season 6 and it was simply just used to stop animals from detecting your movement so that you could tame them easier. That's pretty much it. Moving on. Now I believe the rest of the items on the list were all either from limited time modes or creative modes. So they technically weren't in the base battle royale game mode. And as you know we haven't had an LTM in a while. Anyways, next we have the snowball. Yeah it was a snowball. And you could throw it. Yeah. Next we have the water balloon, which was introduced in season 9 with the splashdown LTM, in which you had to throw them at players to deal about 10 damage to them. And in that LTM this was the only way to damage players, by throwing those water balloons at them. They also had a very short range, I don't know why you couldn't really throw them that far, but yeah. Then we have the bounty puck from the Mando's bounty LTM, I hope I said that right. Anyways, in this LTM you would eliminate teams to gain more credits and more worth essentially. And this puck was simply used to track your targets and track their worth. That's pretty much it. Moving on, the next three we have are very simple. And that's the torch, flashlight, and the jewel. With the torch and flashlight lighting up areas, obviously. And the jewel actually just worked like normal coins in creative. And I believe these all are creative only items. Anyways, next up we have the Chitauri Jetpack. I really hope I'm not messing up these names. But it's from the Endgame LTM in Season 8. And it was just a jetpack. It worked just like the other ones, but it does look really cool though. Moving on, we have the Avengers Buried Treasure. Also from the Endgame LTM. And it was pretty much the same thing as the regular Buried Treasure. You would have a map which showed you exactly where to go to find the treasure. And once you got there, you'd have to pickaxe it to dig it up. From this chest, you could either get Captain America's shield, Hawkeye's bow, Iron Man's repulsors, or Thor's stormbreaker. Which leads us into those items. First being Captain America's shield, which of course allows you to block damage and also throw it, which deals 175 damage. Then we have Hawkeye's bow which shoots explosive arrows and it also acted as a grappler giving you some mobility as well. And then we have Iron Man's repulsors. These allowed you to jump higher and slowly hover back down. Also of course allowing you to shoot laser beams dealing 35 damage apiece. And then we have Thor's Stormbreaker. This item allowed you to either swing it, throw it, or launch yourself into the air dealing up to 200 to 225 damage. And the last of those being the Infinity Gauntlet. And this would actually turn you into Thanos himself, giving you a thousand health and allowing you to jump extremely high, crash down to the ground, punch, and shoot lasers. This was definitely a crazy time in Fortnite's history. And I believe that's all of them. Kinda cool how some items are just their own thing and don't fit into any of the normal categories of other items in the game. I think that just goes to show how creative Epic is with their items, also considering the massive amount of items that have ever been in the game. Anyways, if you watched to the end of the video, I really appreciate it, that really means a lot to me. And if you enjoyed it, hit that like button and maybe hit that sub button too. And leave a comment down below if I left anything out. Which was your favorite item on this list?